It's not enough to study the Torah in and of itself. What we call the, the, the necessity to learn what we call emunah. The study of emunah is what introduces you, meets you up with, how say, and, and uh, in, exposes you to the, the bigger world, to the two things maybe we mentioned last week. The notena Torah, the giver of the Torah. What are you studying? What is this Torah? We mentioned you can, he gives an example also of dealing with the details without being plugged into the electric socket. You don't understand that you're dealing with the, the light of God, of the, this, the word of God that comes to this world. So you can do the mitzvot, you can have the Torah, but it's, um, like I said, you're dealing with the branches. That's what we mentioned last week, right? the, Ram, the Maral explains what does it mean they didn't make the blessing of the Torah. They learned Torah, they said the words, but they didn't recognize the giver of the Torah. They didn't understand the significance of what this Torah is, the divinity of this Torah, this otherworldliness of goodness that comes to this world. And the second half, we mentioned the bracha, the asher bacharbanam, that you've chosen us from all the nations, that you created a receptacle that its essence is the, the desire to be, to live, to absorb and to reveal and to expose to all the world, all of our lives, to live all of our lives according to, to bring it to the whole world, to expose this illumination of this divine good. That's what learning emunah is all about. Opens you up to the wider expanses of what's behind Torah. What, is, what does it mean, the giver of Torah, that these, sun, these rays of light take the person out of the room and see, wow, the light is, it illuminates the whole world, not just my private room. I didn't realize. I thought light was good because look what it enables me to get around my house and room and without stumbling over uh, all the different things and tables and chairs. You go out of the room and you see, wow, this light is enormous. It, it, it gives heat and it gives life to myriads of creatures and beings in all of the world. That's what emunah does. takes you out of the private and now see the grandeur of the divine, the notena Torah, like the Maral explains. And we said, Rav Siyuda, right? The Asher B'charbanu, the... He that has chosen us from all the nations, that our essence is to, like I said, to want to live, to be, to understand, and to reveal that light in all of our lives and all of creation. And that's who you really are. That's yourself. And that's what Amunah does. It elevates your whole um, aspirations, your motivations, your drives, your whole life level. You're a different person. That's why the Rambam writes it in Laws of Tshuva, to not just an individual sin, but Tshuva and your whole existence to rise up. And the Rambam writes on line number 28, the end of 27, 28, that you have to teach the children, the people, to get to this level slowly but surely, megalim lem, then you, re, you reveal to them. As their wisdom is advanced, you reveal to them this secret. Raze, what's the secret? But learning Torah, Lodi Shema, but there's another secret. God, this learning of emunah, this other dimension of Torah study that exposes you to the goals, to the divineness of what you're studying, what this is all about, the grandeur of it, and the grandeur of your, your soul, that is built, so to speak, the two sides of the coin, of the giver of the Torah and the, your neshama that is able to, that just desires to be that divine good, that wants that divine, that's the real you. And that changes your whole life level, your motivation. You can't do that all at once. You, just, you have to raise the person, the child, develop him in his studies in order that his tarbeda ata, that his wisdom is expanded and his life level is raised and you reveal to him this bigger secret. Ma'at ma'at, slowly but surely. Slowly, slowly, he says. Get them used to this concept until they will recognize him. Line number 28. Until they will be um, raised to this higher level. How does he say it in English? The translation here. As their knowledge grows and their wisdom increases, the secret should be revealed to them slowly, bit by bit. They should become accustomed to this concept gradually until they grasp it and know it and begin serving God out of love. Then they become different people. This whole commandment is to bring us out of what caused the Khurban, the destruction of the temple. That because We did doers of religion, doers of studies of Torah, but like dry, rote, like it says in the Prophet, the mitzvot um, anashim alumada, out of rote, out of habit. They did the mitzvot. But the next level of tshuva, in the time of, of the special period that we're in now, we'll talk about, maybe, hopefully, of rising up to a new life level that we're aware, that we're ready for, because that's inside of that's the real us. You belong to a bigger, higher, idyllic truth. And that's you. It's not something external to you. Try to command me to get to that top of the mountain that I can't climb. No, that's where you belong. That's the real you. The world that made you think that you're private, egoistic. and That's not the real you. And that's why you won't even find your true self. You won't be satisfied until you reach that peak of 
of your true existence. So first of all, you have to know who you are. This commandment shows us, revolutionizes. You should know, first of all, who you really are, what you belong to. Therefore, again, the study of Emunah is so necessary to take us out of that, again, private understanding, the unsophisticated, that which, again, caused the destruction. We're trying to now rebuild the, the antidote to what caused the destruction of the exile. We're trying to now, in these three weeks, especially the nine days now, of what is needed to return us to the recognizing of the divine, the study of the divineness of what is the grandeur of the Torah, what does that include, what is the whole system about, not just what to do and how to do, but what is it all about, what is it for, what are the ideals that are in, coming through and within and in those details, and how it all belongs to you, how that's you, that's the real you. And that's what learning Emunah is all about. One last point of what our Blackford brings down towards the beginning of the book more, of the necessity of studying of Emunah, which is always true. Again, this is based on the works of Rav Kook, Rav Tzuda, the emphasis and the necessity of, of learning Emunah, and why, especially in these generations, it's a long study, we've discussed that at certain times, of the redemption period, is when the souls are energized with this new, bigger, full vitality of life, of total life, of not just satisfied with the do and don't ask. Searching for the bigger understanding the, in the world in general and secular studies, but all, man is now rising and especially in Am Yisrael is more acute this need for the, the true, bigger, holistic, divine truth. And that's what Emunah is about, study of the Maral, the Kuzari, the Maral, of Cook, and other books that don't just give you wisdom, information, bits of Jewish philosophy, but raise your life level show you who you really are and take you, elevate you to like get higher motivations, higher drives. You know what you're part of. You know what you belong to. That you take you out of the walls of the house. You see the light in its grandeur. You, and you belong to that. But this is unique and special even more, the special needs of studying Emunah in these generations of redemption. And our black learns it out from a certain pasuk. Again, there's more to talk about. He has chapters on this of the necessity in these generations. But Especially from one pasuk in your meow that we'll end up with. In chapter uh, 40 in your meow, Yishayao, excuse me. The other verse was from your meow. This is from Yishayao, chapter 40, verse 9. It's not on your sheets. Because you see the Rambam, as you, if it's underlined there, you have to read in the, in the sheet, line number 30, 31, that you, one does not love God except for the knowledge which he knows him. Not just the do's and don'ts. I know how to do. But what are the, the knowledge of God, the awareness of the greatness, of get out and see the greatness of that light of the sun. What, how amazing, how wondrous, how grand and how lofty. What you're dealing with is not some you have to in order to get a reward. But it's the, the beauty of it. Lishma can only be approached. The serving God out of love can only come according to the knowledge that you know Him. And by emunah, what we call that study of the grandeur of the God, the ways of God, and his, the Ramchal, etc. The study of the greatness of the gods, the divine ideal, and the greatness of Torah, and the greatness of Am Yisrael that was created with that soul to be and to live and to express that goodness in this world. And according to the knowledge, thus will be the love. If it's a small knowledge of God, thus will be the small love of God. And the greater, Harbe. And therefore you have to, Laskil Bechokhmat, how does he um, translate this? One can only love God as an outgrowth of the knowledge which, which he knows him. The nature of one's love depends on the nature of one's knowledge. A small amount arouses a smaller love, etc. Therefore, it is necessary for a person to seclude himself in order to understand and conceive wisdom and concepts which make his creator known to him. And that is what learning emunah. But now, the, especially in this generation, that's always true. But in the generations of the redemption, so he brings down this verse in Yeshayahu 40. Al har gavo alilach l'mevaseret tiyon harimik b'koach kolech mevaseret Yerushalayim hari al tirai imri l'arei yudah hinei lokechem. It says, go up on the mountain. The prophet says, go up on the, this lofty high mountain. And you mevaseret tiyon, you announcer, right outside Yerushalayim, mevaseret tiyon, you harbinger of Zion, raise up your voice with strength, b'koach b'kolech. You, again, Mavaseret Yerushalayim. You, this Mavaseret Sion, Yerushalayim. Harimi, again, raise up your voice. Altiri, don't be afraid. 
Imri liyar leyuda. Say to the city of Yudah, Hinel, this here is your God. So what is this verse referring to? And over the rabbis explain, and he nelokechem. This is the time when the divine is revealed, the divine truth is known. Is seen. This is what we call the redemption. So then the question is, though, Rabbi Chras, if so, if this is the redemption, why does it say, uh, if you point to it and say, he nelokechem, here is your God, here is the divine truth, you see it, it's now clear. Why is there any point to rise, go up on the top of the mountain? Why do you have to go up to the mountain to see it? If it's clear to all, why do you have to get up on the top of the Empire State Building? Now, I don't know, the other buildings are gone now. Uh, whatever, the uh, Sears Towers, you have to get up and say, wow, well, look and see it. What do you mean? Everyone sees it now. The redemption is when it's clear, when the truth is known, the knowledge of God fills the earth, like it says in Yeshayahu chapter 11. And why do you have to also, Harimi Bekoach raise your voice with strength. Why do you have to raise your voice? If it's clear in front of everyone, it's, uh, there's no need to raise your voice and everyone sees it. And even more, even more, what it says later, Al Tirai, raise your voice, don't be afraid. What should be afraid of at this point? The redemption is here, Inei Lokechem, here is your God, the truth is clear, the redemption, the knowledge of God, the awareness of goodness, of truth, of justice. <laughs> don't be afraid to say that. What do you mean afraid? If this is the redemption, is, what, is he, what should be afraid of? But rather, Ablacher explained that this is referring to the... Not the end of the process, but rather at the stages of redemption, when it's not all exposed, it's not all clear, it's not all revealed. And the, the level is here. In other words, the Hinei Elokechem, the, the goal, the levels, the energies, the potential of, of redemption, of good people, of good souls is now here. People are now ready for it or thirsty for it, but... It's not revealed yet. We talked about the redemption process, right? It comes in stages, kima kima, slowly, slowly, until it's, res- till it's ultimately exposed and revealed. But it's not all visible at the beginning. The first stage is not so clear. So what does it mean to go up to the top of the mountain? It doesn't mean here to literally right, go up to a mountain or the Empire State Building. But rather, this overview, right? When you plan something, you do something, you get up, you have to get this over, this holistic view, the view from above, this vantage point. Go up and get the vantage point of where we are, what's going on, what is the, the bigger perspective. Learning emuna, in other words, to see this bigger picture, not just the, the, the trees, you don't see the forest. Get up and now see the forest, see the bigger picture of where we're at, what is history, where has God brought us to this point of history. That's what we connected to once we saw that's the Torah of Eretz Yisrael. The Torah of Eretz Yisrael is this vantage point, like the white light, before it's refracted, it's refracted the different colors the piece by piece, the different trees. You see the whole white light, the bigger picture. Not to talk about that, but that is this, that's what learning Emunah is all about. We mentioned the, we mentioned the Chazal, the Midrash Tilim 105, that if you wish to see the Shekhinah, the divine presence in this world, learn Torah and Eretz Yisrael. That is the vantage point that enables you to see this bigger perspective. So go up to the top of the mountain. Get that view of Emunah that sees and knows. And then you have the ability to guide and direct, to show the way then you will have this view that now you can go into the details and you go back to the bottom, you know, to the day-to-day level and, and guide and, 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 and direct people. And that's why he says also, raise your voice with strength. Because it won't be so simple. Not only won't be simple to see, you have to learn and study, but it'll be, you'll be afraid to say it. Things that won't be so popular. What are you talking about? Redemption, holy souls. Look around you. Look at the newspapers. Look at the secular state. Look at all the negative things that are going on here. Giving back yami, sign like whatever. Don't you see what's going on? What are you talking about? Redemption. Holy, good souls prepared for that. Right? We said the volcano, right? Next to the volcano. I don't hear anything, nothing. Or the chicks, right? Right before they hatch. It seems to be dead. There's nothing. There's no life going on here. What are you talking about? Life and new vitality and new energies. For those that don't see it, they just judge by the external. But it, not only they don't see it, but they think you're crazy. So it says, Harimi Harimi Al Tirai, raise your voice, don't be afraid. Because you might say things that are uh, look detached from reality, like Rabbi Akiva that laughs when he sees the destruction, everyone else is crying, and he sees something beyond. He sees what they see, but he sees what they don't see. And therefore it requires giants of emunah, giants of vision that first of all live it themselves, that recognize the inner dimension, what's going on. How the nation is thirsty. He writes here, um, 
page 124, that requires these people, Rav Tzuri used to call it, G'dudim Shel Emunah, how do you say, divisions of G'dudeya, G'dudim Shel Maminim, divisions of believers, of giants of spirit, that are not, I can see, I say, um, don't deviate or aren't pushed off to see because of the external facade of what's going on, what seems to be so far away from Torah and mitzvot. They see the inner level. They meet up with it. They recognize it. And they recognize the thirst that is there. If you love